we go. While you have it off, you can inspect your brake shoes. Make sure you still have enough pad on them. Inspect your wires, springs. And also inspect your adjuster. But nothing on the inside was damaged, so we're going to be okay with that. Steps to be replaced. Take out your races, unless you buy some more. Okay. We have our bearings out. The racers are already in the hub, so that's a good thing. These are the old bearings. Respected them. Checked them out. They look pretty good. No bearings missing, no bearings loose. But if you want to be on the safe side, you can always just get new ones and replace them. There's never anything wrong with that. Never anything wrong with new parts. If you're going to use your old parts, always inspect them first. Make sure everything's intact. Check out your parts that you're putting on. Make sure there's no wear in it. Make sure there's no abrasions. And definitely, as you can see in this hub, the grease. Always grease your parts whenever you're dealing with suspension. Any metal moving parts going together, always make sure to move them. And these two, you can see where the studs were ripped off. There's the new ones. So we have one stud left in it. So now, we're going to replace our bearing so we can put the hub back on. The drum, I'm sorry. Replace them. Be right back after that. I've been out there three years. That's a red teeth. Look, I tell you, I said you had a run. Okay, we're back. You can see we have our races in, we have our bearings in, along with our. Take this off. We don't need that anymore. Have all bearings in on both sides. Everything is greased. Ready to go back on. Alright. Just like the old one came off, you know we should slide right on. And this should only be hand tightened. Never tighten it too much. After hand tighten, maybe one, one and a half turns. Never want to have it too tight or it'll seize. Everything inside of your axle. Okay. Next step, place our counter pin. Let's turn it a couple more times. You want to turn it to 
you're able to replace the cotter pin freely. You shouldn't have any complications to where you have to push anything back. Like I say, maybe one full, one and a half full turn. You should be able to see it. There we go. Just like everything else, the cotter pin should go in just the same. Take our hammer, tap it in. Doesn't have to be hard, doesn't have to, you don't have to bang it or anything like that. Just tap it in where our bow doesn't move. Can hold it from both sides. Same way we took it out, let's go back in. Make sure you take it all the way in inside the grooves on your bow don't want to get anything left out hanging and we bend it back. Now we have our drum back on. Next up we have our cap. Don't want to lose anything. And again if your racers or your bearings are damaged. You can always buy more. It's simple. This is pretty much what it is. These are your two bearings. The larger one in the back, the smaller one in the front. This will be your cap for the back. Your seal. Now make sure this seal is straight. Make sure it's not broken or anything like that if you're gonna re reuse it. Make sure it's not torn. This is our new one, so and nothing was wrong with the old one, so we we're okay. But we're gonna keep these just in case. You never know. That's just being economical. All right. This is our grease cap. Cap goes on like so. Like everything else, just tap it in. Tap this in, we'll be right back. And there you have it. We have our drum back. All races in along with the bearings and our caps, grease sitting on. Now we're ready to replace the tire. And wheel. <laughs> All right, now we have our new wheel. Replace it. Make sure this does not happen again. <laughs> it's a scary thing. There we go. Perfect fit. Using our wheel pattern, this is definitely a definitely a good guy to have when you have a trailer, because. Even though certain wheels may look the same, you can have the same lug pattern and everything, a few centimeters can throw you off. Very few. So this is definitely a good tool to have. Just a laminated cardboard piece of paper that you say you can line your wheels up. You can line your lugs up, I'm sorry. Tell you what you got. Hours on this particular trailer, five and a half. You can also see the difference. That would be your five and a half. This would be your fives. So as you can tell, there's very little difference. You can, it's not hard. If you had a five, this is how much you would be off. That's one, that's the other. So 
think you'd have it, but you don't. It's actually five and a half. Perfect fit. And you can usually get these at uh, your local trailer shop. Um, I haven't really seen any auto parts to sell trailer trailer parts or anything like that. Uh, I say mostly I go to a, a trailer dealer. Uh, we went to um, Trailer Tire and Wheel. They have a lot of Ranch King, so I'm sure if you have anything with Ranch King or if you have any other catalogs, they'll probably have it in there or you can order it. Alright, next step, lug nuts. Always start with hand tightening. Car, trailer, whatever it is, always start with hand tightening. Reason being, you stop the impact gun, you're gonna miss thread, cross thread. So always start with hand tightening. Always get them going first. And once you have them on, they should easily turn. No grease or anything like that. You should be able to turn freely with your hands. Once you've done that, you know your threads are not crossed. Get all of them on. Your next step would be to tighten your lugs. Now, a lot of people make the mistake, even when they're changing a the tire on their car or anything else, like say trailer or anything. Most people will tighten their lugs in a circle. That is absolutely incorrect. Do not tighten your lugs in a circle. That is the first way or the easiest way you will have a wheel off. Always go in a star pattern. You start here. Go across to here, come back across, always go across. That way you know your wheel is see, it sees against the plate the way it's supposed to be. And everything is tightened down. Let me get my pull away and I'll show you guys in just a second. Alright, got my four way. Put it on. Get this on going here. Start with my first one. You can go ahead and go all the way while you have it up. It should be real easy, just like your hand. Once the wheel starts turning, that's good enough. Because we're going to let it down slightly to tighten up. Like I say, go across to the other lug. Same thing. I like to try to spin it fast so it kind of catches it. Then hit it. Maybe bring the wheel back. Boom. Tight enough for now. Come across to your other lug. Again, never go in a circle pattern, ever. Unless you want to be driving down the freeway and you look to the side and your wheel's going faster than you are. <laughs> I've seen it happen. All right, let's see, we'll grab it here. One quick turn, that's it. They don't have to be super, super tight because the pressure from driving and everything, that'll, it'll pull itself back. And like I said again, once we let the wheel down a little, it'll be back on. Well, we're tightening everything back up. Uh, second hand tight, but using our four-way. I say hand tight because we're not using any air tool. And always, no matter what, again, I reiterate, always go in a cross pattern even when you're tightening up when you're putting them on and when you're hand tightening the second time always go in the cross pattern always give them a little more snug here And there you have it. Next step would be to let our trailer down a little. Like I said, uh, check the, the tightness of our lugs again, one more time, again in the cross pattern. And that'll be it. Again, appreciate you spending your time with us. I hope it will, it will be a help. And we'll be back later with more videos of DIY, do it yourself, 
automobiles, houses, repairs, replacements, remodels. You guys stick with us. We'll definitely give you a hand. Thank you.